Well, good morning. Welcome to Moments in the Word. I'm excited about diving into God's Word with you for just a few minutes. Uh, I wanted to ask you to pray for us tonight as we continue Kid Venture, continue uh, youth worship, and we'll have lots of children and volunteers on campus tonight. I would just ask that you pray for us as we continue to build relationships and we continue to share the gospel. Over the past few weeks, if you remember, uh, we've been walking through our vision here at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, uh, strengthening relationships with God, His church, and the world. Last week, during our Moments in the Word, we talked about um, what Jesus calls the greatest commandment, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You see, I believe that this is a synonymous teaching with the strengthening relationships with God. As we strengthen our relationship with God, we will grow in our love, and our love will abound uh, in all aspects of our life, in our, in our heart, in our soul, in our mind, and in our strength. Today, we want to look at the second greatest command uh, that follows this one, uh, which is love your neighbor as yourself. And I believe that this, again, just goes hand in hand with strengthening relationships with the church and the world. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, I'd ask you to open to the book of Mark chapter 12. Uh, Mark chapter 12, we're going to read verses 28 through 31, with our focus being on verse 31 this morning. If you don't have a copy of God's Word, the words will be on the screen below. Follow along with me as I read today. It says, And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, Which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Pay close attention. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other greater commandment than these. You see, friends, this call to love our neighbors, it's not a complicated one, but it can be challenging to follow, and I understand that. It means more than being hospitable. It means more than being tolerant or patient or kind. It means more than showing respect even or honoring other people. It also means more than just being civil with people that you disagree with, even though it also means all of those things. <clears throat> loving our neighbor does include all of those things. However, loving our neighbor implies that the well-being of others actually matters. Their, their life matters. There is a purpose for them. So we should work for justice, for protection, and opportunities for others to thrive. It means listening to others and caring about the environment and the health care. And taking part in helping, uh, taking apart the institutionalized oppression that limits the opportunities of others. It also shows that the possibilities for showing love and care for our neighbors is endless and could leave us overwhelmed by all the needs for a neighborly love. You see, when we think about loving our neighbor, I oftentimes think that we stop at our physical neighbors. We've been having this conversation with our boys about who are our neighbors. And while those people who live around us are our neighbors, I believe that God's calling us to a greater aspect here and uh, calling us to more than just a physical sense. You see, this can sometimes be easy to love those who physically are right around us. They, a lot of times, are sharing the same stage of life with us. Take, for instance, my neighbors. Uh, we love our cul-de-sac and we love the people who live around us. Uh, there's a lot of people that are our age and that have kids that are the same age as ours and we get to play outside. But even the ones who don't, I believe we have a good rapport with them. It's easy for us to love them. However, it's when we move outside of those physical areas, outside of that physical arena of the people who live around us, when this concept begins to get a little harder and it begins to, to get a little more frustrating to flesh out and to understand you see, in this call to love our neighbors as ourselves, God is referring to everyone in the world. He is referring to those who look different than us because of ethnic, ethnic differences. It's a call to love those who don't talk like us. It's a call to love those who maybe are not privileged as we are. It's a call to love people who may think politically different than we do. It's an actual call to love everyone that God has created the same. Now let me be clear, even though we are called to love them, God 
God's Word does also tell us that we don't have to like the sin. Now, I know a lot of times we ask that question, well, why am I supposed to love that person that's living in this sin? And and friends, I want to submit to you today that as believers, as children of God, we're called to love them, but we may not love the things that they take part in. We may not love the, the ways of their life. Again, this is not a call to not like a person. It's a call to not like the sin in which they are enslaved. Yet all of us can love our neighbor in the name of Jesus Christ. We can love them enough to show how the love of Jesus is shaping us to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. John 13, 34 says, As you are loved, Jesus says, so love one another. Friends, our greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But as we do that, we can show that love too, just as John 13, 34 tells us, that as we were loved, the way that Jesus loved us, you know, we're not anything compared to Jesus. I'm a, a worthless sinner compared to the holiness of Jesus. But yet Jesus chose to die on the cross for me so that I could have eternal life with him. And in the same way that he loved me, even despite my sin, even despite my my wrongdoing, he still died on the cross for me. And friends, that love that he showed to me is the same love that I'm supposed to show to my neighbors. Not just those physical neighbors, but those neighbors all around the world who are different than me, who look different than me, who act different than me, who believe different than me. I have a call to love them the way that Jesus loved me so that we can share the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. I hope you've enjoyed this moment in the Word today. I hope you have a great day today. I want to pray for you and then we'll close. Thank you, Lord, so much for loving me so completely. God, thank you for loving me and and giving your life, giving your son's life for me on the cross so that one day I could have eternal life with you. Help me to love my neighbor the same way that you love me. Help me to show the same sacrificial love that you show to me, God, on a daily basis. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And it's in your gracious and loving heavenly name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a great rest of the week, and we look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday.